he said, we're gonna start using this thing called a neural net, and we're gonna start developing a concept called artificial intelligence. And I was set up on a computer in Rahway to learn early AI programming in 1992. At first, I was given one hour a day on the Cray supercomputer. Of course, it came at around 3 a.m. in the morning each night as I was pretty low on the totem pole, and I would stick around to then to make sure the code uploaded properly and ran. Usually leaving around 5.30 in the morning, run home, take a shower. I had a small basement apartment that I paid $200 a month for. My kitchen was a microwave on top of a washer and dryer where I would just microwave water, throw in spaghetti, whether it was breakfast or dinner, and head out again. So a lot of my background is not only computer science, but the understanding of the drive and motivation necessary to succeed was a very important kernel of these early days. I was very fortunate to meet my wife in medical school and ultimately went from Harvard to Johns Hopkins together. We couples matched in, at Hopkins. We went there because the internal medicine residency program at Hopkins was considered the hardest in the country. My wife and I had decided we would do one more hard thing and then get off the train. Well, I, I didn't do so good at getting off the train, but um, we went there because the intensity of the training program, because Hopkins had not yet accepted what's called the Libby Zion case rulings on the number of hours house staff is allowed to work. And so a typical work week there in Baltimore was well over 100 hours a week. The thought was to be able to see a patient's course from admission into the ER all the way through to the point of being stable was an incredible learning experience for the resident. And it was, but it was pretty intense. And to my shock and dismay, after all these years of computer science development, where I was doing AI development for pharmaceutical companies on Cray supercomputers, I arrived at what I thought was one of the most amazing clinical facilities in the world to learn that they weren't using computers in healthcare. They were using computers to store data. They were using computers to retrieve data. There wasn't any analysis. There was no decision support. There was nobody trying to figure out the right medication to put on a patient. There was nobody trying to figure out a care paradigm that might be better. That was really dismaying to me, uh, shocking to me. Had I made a mistake, to go into so much of my work, to bring it to the clinical environment, to only find that, in fact, on the wards, it wasn't being used. There's my wife and me uh, here in this picture. You'll notice there's a small child in my arms. That was our first child. Um, you know, why is the child in this picture? Because we really couldn't afford daycare. Um, so we would literally bring the baby to the orthopedic floor and leave her there. And then we would bring her to the cardiology floor and leave her there. And this was back in the day of pagers. When one of us would go on, the other one would go off. We could never be on at the same time because who would take care of the baby? So we like literally didn't see each other for the longest period of time and I'd have to text her, well actually we didn't call it text, but I have to call the pager, page operator, who thought it was really funny that Dr. K. Dunleavy was telling Dr. K. Dunleavy that the baby was on like Oslor 8 or something like that. And then, you know, we'd go pick up the baby and swap and, you know, one would drive home and the other would start work. You know, incidentally, for those historians in the room, uh, there's Dr. Paige Killian. Um, an amazing clinician, amazing person, our chief medical officer at Inovalon today. has been with us uh, since. And right next to her, Dr. Rochelle Lewinsky, the just recent head of the CDC and, and good friends of ours. It was an amazing time. But unfortunately, computers really weren't being used. And so from there, it was really a process of go build Inovalon. So the creation of Inovalon's first headquarters outside of Baltimore ensued. Okay, just kidding, that's not our headquarters outside of Baltimore. That was our headquarters outside of Baltimore. <laughs> so if you look at the early proverbial documentation of the company, it basically said the address of the spare bedroom next to the baby room on 26 Stable Run Court. And literally every expense was at 18 to 22% interest. We didn't have any money. The checks that I wrote to form the company, to buy the first business cards, to buy the first stationery, were done on Visa credit card checks, all just borrowed off of tomorrow to enable this concept of this dream 
of being able to make healthcare better.